Hello and welcome to this tutorial on standard access lists. We're going to take a look at the structure of a standard access list, what are its different components and how are they put together, and then we'll move into how to configure it and then also how to apply it. So we begin with the structure and here is the structure of a standard access list. It all begins with the access list command and the very first parameter we look at is the access list number. Now this is a number that has to fall between 1 and 99 or 1300 and 1999. So we have two ranges to choose from. The number we choose has to come from one of those two ranges because the router is going to look at the number we configure and if it falls within these two ranges then the router immediately knows that this is a standard access list. Okay, so the number is actually significant. Also, the number is going to uniquely identify this access list on the router. So each access list actually has its own number. Now there's an exception to this rule and we cover that in a different tutorial, but as for standard access lists, this is the rule. You have to have a number to identify it. Okay, now the next section we look at is the action. And this is either permit or deny. And quite simply, this is where we state this packet that matches this line is either going to be permitted or denied by the router. Now remember, the packet has to match this line of the access list in order for this action to be applied. So if it doesn't match, no action is, is enacted and we just move on to the next line in the access list. Okay, so those are our two actions and you have to choose one or the other. You can't choose both. And then finally we get into the source and the wildcard mask. And this is the really important part because this is where we specify what IPs we're interested in. Now we've mentioned in, in the past we're interested in, we, in identifying either a single IP, a range of IPs, or every single IP that, that exists. So let's walk through a few examples and, you, and you'll see what we mean by this. Let's say we want to match every single IP uh, that a packet could possibly have. We could do something like this. Here we have access list and the number 5. We're deciding to permit and we're using the keyword any. So instead of specifying a source and a wildcard mask, we could just take this little shortcut and the any parameter simply means match any packet we want. However, if you wanted to actually write out a source and wildcard mask, you can do that and it would look like this. For the source, you would put all zeros, and then for the wildcard mask, you would have all ones, the all 255s. Generally speaking, most people just use the any parameter. It's very simple and it's easy to identify. Okay, so that's how we would match every single IP address out there. But let's say we want to go to the opposite extreme and match only a single IP. Well, again, we could use a special parameter and this is the host parameter you see here. So we have access list 5 and then we want to deny a particular host and this is the IP address here of the host 10.10.10.1. Now only this one IP is going to be denied and if we use the host parameter then we don't need to also use a wildcard mask because the host actually means a single IP address. So it would be redundant. It's not necessary to include a wildcard mask here. So this is how you just single out a single IP. However, if you wanted to write it out the long way, you can do that as well. And this is what it would look like. Again, we have access list 5 deny, but this time we remove the host parameter and we still have our source IP, but now we do have a wildcard mask and it's all zeros. And as you remember, a zero means to match it exactly. So we're matching this single IP exactly. And that's how you would single out one IP address or one host. The last example is to match a range of IP addresses. Here's an example of that. Access list 5 and we've decided to deny a subnet. We start off by specifying our source, so 10.10.10.0. And then after that comes the wildcard mask, which then tells us what particular range of IPs are affected. So we have 0.0.0.255, and as we now know, this wildcard mask would equate to a slash 24 subnet mask. So we are saying that this particular line of the access list is going to deny 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Okay? 
So that is the basic structure of a standard access list. Let's look at an example. Here we have a very simple network. We have one host up here, 10.10.10.17, and we have a file server down here, and they're both connected to the same router. What we want to do is we want to prevent this particular host from accessing the file server. At the same time, we want to allow everybody else to access it. So we just want to deny access for one IP address, a single host. All right, so that's our diagram. Let's actually now take a look at the configurations involved in order to accomplish this. Now the first line of the access list we're going to create is going to look something like this. Access list 5 remark secure web server. This remark is a special parameter and it allows us to put a little description into one line of the access list. This line is not used to match any traffic it's used so that when we look at the configuration, either a week from now or a year from now, we can easily see a description and understand what this access list was created for. It's very helpful. Now we get into the real substance of the access list. We want to deny our host 10.10.10.17. So our access list statement looks like this. Access list 5, the number stays the same because it's part of the same access list and we're going to, den do, to deny a single host. So we include the host parameter and then the IP address of that particular PC. Now if we were to stop here, we would actually end up denying everybody access. Why? Because of the implicit deny at the end of an access list. So even though there are no other lines here, if a packet were to make it through this first line and if it doesn't match the 10.10.10.17, then it would be caught by the implicit deny which states if a packet doesn't match any line then we drop it. So we need to address that because we want everyone else to have access. So we would add this line at the end. Access list 5 permit any. So after we deny access to the single host everyone else is allowed access. And that's our access list in order to accomplish this particular task. However just creating the access list is not going to do anything. We actually need to apply it in order for it to work. An access list can be applied to an interface and here's what it could look like. We would apply this on interface Fast Ethernet 01 and you see that that interface has an IP address and here's the command we're most interested in, the IP access group. This command will identify a standard access list and apply it to that interface. So here we are applying access list 5. And then we need to state the direction, either in or out. And in a minute when we look at the diagram, you'll see why we chose the out parameter. Now two things to note when you do apply a standard access list, it's generally considered best practice to apply this as close to the destination as possible so that we avoid blocking our host inadvertently from reaching other destinations it's allowed to. Let's go back to the illustration and you'll see exactly what we mean by this. Okay, so first we have our access list that we just created. So we configure that on our router and then we want to apply it. And I said we should apply it as close to the destination as possible. So if the file server is our destination, we'd want to apply it on this interface. And here's how we would do that. Again, the same commands the interface subcommand IP access group 5 out, meaning we're going to compare packets going out the interface towards the file server. Now why would we not want to apply this access list on FA00? Well if we did, and if we did it on the inbound, so inspect all traffic coming in, no matter where our host was trying to go, it would always be denied and that's because of this line here. So our intention is not to block this host from perhaps going out a different link over here out to the internet or something. Our intention is only to block it from exiting this interface here. So when our host does source a frame and a packet inside it, it hits the router, the router takes it in, it performs routing, and then it determines, okay, I have to send it out FA01, but before I do that, I see there's an access list in the outbound direction, I need to compare that packet to the access list. 
So it does that, and the first applicable line is actually the one that will prevent it from being sent. It matches a single host with that IP address, which is our IP. Because it's being denied, it drops the packet, and then, and then it's done. If somebody else, let's say living over here, wanted to access the file server, the same thing would happen. The router would perform routing, and then before sending it out, FA01, it would again look at our access list, and it would compare each line. And because this host over here does not have 10.10.10.17 as its IP address, this line would not apply. It would then move on to the last line saying to permit any IP source address. So then that packet would be sent successfully to the file server. Okay, so that's the configuration and the application of the access list. If we did not do this, the access list would not be applied anywhere and it would not be then used to actually compare packets. So without the IP access group command, our access list is just idle. It's not actually being applied anywhere. To summarize what we covered, here is the structure of the standard access list. Be sure to commit to memory the access list number ranges and also the different options we have for the source and wildcard masks. In particular, we introduced the any and the host parameters to specify different ranges of traffic. And then we introduced a new command as well, the IP access group command. And we use this to apply an access list to an interface. So we specify the access list number, and then we state which direction is this going to affect inbound traffic or outbound traffic. And then finally, as a general rule of thumb for access list configuration, you want to apply a standard access list as close to the destination as possible. That way you don't interfere with other types of traffic flows that, that should not be messed with, that should not have any filtering applied. And we saw that in the example. Okay, so that's it. That is the standard access list structure and configuration. Thanks for watching.